So I've got a question. When shooting with a mono camera and filters at a broadband target, much like I'm doing tonight, right now I'm shooting M63, the Sunflower Galaxy. It's one of my absolute favorites. But the question is this, what actually is the right way to go about things? Is it to shoot LRGB as the common knowledge would suggest is the right way forwards? Or is there still an argument to be made for just shooting plain old RGB? I'll be honest with you, and I don't really know. I don't have a concrete answer for this one, but at least it's something I'd like to explore more and investigate for myself from this location. And that's what tonight is going to be all about. As I just mentioned a moment ago, I currently am up and running. I'm shooting M63, the Sunflower Galaxy, and I'm doing that in LRGB. And I'm going to continue shooting it in LRGB throughout the whole night, just so I've got a nice pool of data to pull from and kind of turn it into a couple of individual experiments, which I'll just try and outlay for you right now. So if you can imagine per hour spent underneath the sky, my question really is, which is going to get me the most bang for buck from a light polluted location? Now I'm shooting from a Bortle 7 sky here. So it could be that the RGB filters, which I have, which is ZWO LRGB filters, they have a light pollution cutoff built in. So it could turn out that just RGB is actually more valuable per unit of time spent than capturing L as well, which is going to capture ideally a lot more data, but it's also going to introduce all of that light pollution into the stack too. It's not discriminatory at all. It's going to include everything. So I want to make two different stacks uh, from the data once it's all kind of compiled. So I want an RGB only stack and then I want to make a second stack of equal value in time. So I'll cut back a little bit on the RGB and in its place, introduce some L for this secondary stack. And I want to kind of pit them against one another and stretch them and play with the data and just see which is giving me the best results from here, as I said, from this light blue location. Now, I hope that I've done a good enough job there of kind of explaining the outline of this experiment. And uh, I'm not actually trying to discredit, by the way, one side of the argument or the other. I don't really have a horse in this race. I don't know which is better. And I'm really not that bothered which turns out to be better. It's no sweat to me just changing it from LRGB to just RGB. I don't mind. So, uh, it's just going to be a journey of discovery and like all journeys it does start with the first step which is what tonight is going to be i'm sure this is going to lead into different splintered off branches of experiments um no doubt with many different outcomes and lots of confusing results and head scratching to be done but that's what it's all about and uh, i hope it's going to be interesting for you to watch as it's going to be definitely interesting for me to perform All right, and guys, so I'm happy to report that last night was a success. Thankfully, I got more than enough data to create an experiment with, and uh, I've already gone ahead actually at this point and done that already. I've got three separate images waiting for you on the computer screen, and we're going to take a look at those in just a moment, and I'll talk you through them, and we can take a look at them all side by side at the exact same time, which I think should be fairly interesting to see directly. Uh, what each of these data sets looks like and I'll tell you more about those in just a sec but basically I've created an LRGB image uh, I also created just an RGB image and then I created a third image which was RGB and a synthetic luminance created just from those same RGB files so no extra data added or anything like that just the data that was already there um, just from taking a cursory glance at this data before I actually dive into it and we take a look actually together, uh, I already think that there is a winner from my location and uh, it's probably what you were expecting. Uh, but I just think it's still all the same. It's interesting to sometimes do experiments like this and uh, I've certainly found it a fun little endeavor and I've got some probably some more idea now about how I want to approach this galaxy season so uh, without any further ado let's head over onto the PC screen now and we'll pick up uh, again and uh, I'll talk you through the data all right guys so as I mentioned we've got three separate versions of this data to take a look at in just a moment so on the left I've got an LRGP image 
in the middle, I've got an RGB only image. And on the right over here is an RGB with a synthetic luminance created from that exact same RGB data as the middle image. Now, in each of these cases, there was only two total hours of data gone into these images. Uh, and in also, again, in all cases, the processing was kept to an absolute bare minimum. So really the only things that was done to it was background extraction and a very minor amount of color calibration. Um, I, on purpose, wanted to show you this data in the rawest possible format, kind of warts and all, on purpose, so that you yourself can judge what it is that you're looking at. Uh, no effort has been made whatsoever to kind of hide any uh, imperfections or anything like that really i've just done the basic things that anybody would do uh, really when looking at data in this way so hopefully this is as direct a comparison as is possible with uh, kind of a really light polluted and moon polluted data set like this uh, i couldn't have left it without any background extraction because the gradients were just too strong in all cases really but without any real further ado, uh, I'll just tell you exactly what these three images are. So on the left, of course, the LRGB was made of one hour of luminance and 20 minutes each of RGB. The middle image, this RGB only was 40 minutes each of red, green and blue. And then on the right, the RGB with synthetic luminance was again just the exact same data pool from this middle image so 40 minutes each of red green and blue just added together so nothing extra was added or anything like that is still the same data pool as that middle one so i think we should uh, perhaps before we zoom in take a little look around so uh, this is a good way to kind of view how flat the background is on each image and for me there's a clear winner at least in terms of background gradients and how well they've been able to be removed and that is just the rgb only image um I'd probably attribute this down to the fact that the filters that I'm using, the ZWO LRGB, at least the RGB part of them, has a light pollution cutoff built in. It's not a particularly aggressive one, but it is there, and I'm shooting from a heavily light polluted location. And it seems to have had an effect that is less gradient to the background on this RGB only shot. Um, second place in terms of background flatness. Uh, goes to this RGB and synthetic luminance. It's just about as flat as the RGB only image as you would probably expect given that it's all the same data. And kind of trailing behind, uh, this was quite challenging to flatten really on the whole, uh, is the L RGB image. There's some kind of dark pockets around it and some lightening, uh, lightened areas should I say. Not ideal, uh, and I probably could have taken a little bit more care, but I really didn't want to dive in too deep with this and uh, maybe give an advantage where it wasn't kind of due one. It really was more difficult to process the luminance compared to the RGB. But that's the case for another experiment, I'd say. But on the whole, the flattest image was the RGB. Now, in terms of actual signal, if I just zoom into a one-to-one -one view, as you can see on both of the... Sorry, all three of these images, indeed... I think the overall signal advantage has to go to the LRGB image and that's probably just about exactly what you'd expect overall. Um, interestingly though, there isn't too much difference between the LRGB image and just the RGB and synthetic luminance. Uh, both of these are actually a good, well... I don't really want to try and quantify it in any terms of percentages or anything like that, but you hopefully you can see even through YouTube compression that they're both quite a ways ahead of just the RGB only image, which I found quite interesting. So even though it's letting in all of the light pollution when you're shooting an LRGB image, uh, just the very fact that you're capturing all of the light uh, has been enough to help it pull ahead in terms of signal to noise ratio. So uh, I think it's probably particularly evident on some of these kind of really faint um, segments around this bright star here. So you can see them quite clearly, this little extension here and here on the LRGB image. Uh, but on the RGB only image, they're quite diminished little segments. And also, I think equally kind of fairly interesting is the dark dust lanes. So on the LRGB image, they, you can see the kind of progress quite a ways around in terms of rotation around this galaxy. You can still follow them. You can trace them all the way up here. But at least on this RGB image, they start to become a little bit more mottled and uh, get lost in the noise a little bit more. The same thing is happening on this dark uh, vein 
over here so you can see it fairly clearly defined even after just two hours total on this LRGB image but at least in the case of the RGB shot it's fading into the background a little bit more in this case so uh, again the nod goes to the LRGB approach in this case uh, but once again a very strong showing was really put forth by the RGB synthetic lumens there's probably better ways to go about this but it's not a process I'm actually that familiar with if I'm being quite honest with you so if you have better ways to do it than the way that I did it which was taking the three masters and basically averaging them together using pixel math um, then perhaps leave me a comment down below and let me know how you'd go about it yourselves um, that could be interesting for me to kind of learn from you guys and uh, kind of develop maybe a future approach now I think looking at these three as I mentioned uh, overall the most pleasing to my eye is the LRGB image uh, that is the winner the stars are very sharp and well defined there may be that little bit sharper in just the RGB only image um, but there's really not much in it and that could be also down to the amount of stretch that was applied again I did my best to kind of stretch these completely equally and keep everything as fair as was possible um, but it could be that the LRGB just due to the nature of it having more signal to play with got stretched that little bit more automatically uh, I did try to do these with an automatic stretch just using the easy processing uh, easy soft stretch now I think what might be interesting uh, is if I just apply an STF to each of these images so really kind of give them a strong stretch and we can take a look um, if you go back to a one-to-one -one view um, yeah there's now a real clear lead for L RGB and RGB synthetic luminance as well actually isn't doing bad at all there in terms of noise in this background so the background of the RGB only image has become quite well quite strongly mottled uh, overall that kind of color model noise um, the RGB synth L hasn't done too badly at all and I think maybe the actual leader again as I mentioned is the L RGB image uh, but it's also making that background kind of really stand out as to how unflat it is for want of a better um, word this overall has been quite interesting to me and um, I think just looking at this data in this very limited way like we are doing right now uh, has been enough to convince me that from my location uh, at least LRGB is still worth shooting instead of just RGB alone uh, and that's probably the way that I'm going to continue to shoot unless I can figure out more experiments to perform um, and indeed different ways to try and validate these findings for myself if you've got any interesting suggestions to make then I'd love to hear them if you just leave me a comment down below I do take care to read every single comment and I try to reply to every comment too uh, if I possibly can even though it takes a fair bit of time these days well that's a nice problem to have isn't it so um, on the whole I think that's about everything that I can show you from this data set so I hope that you've enjoyed taking a look at this alongside me uh, I've certainly found it quite quite eye-opening really um, I was expecting maybe a bit of a closer gap between RGB and LRGB but there you have it I think there's a clear winner in LRGB and maybe you guys do too but I'd love to hear what you think so uh, I think that's about everything for this so thank you very much indeed for coming along and watching and as always thank you all so much for your support uh, in the many many ways that you all give it so uh, I reckon that's about everything from me so until next time now clear skies